We're going to start with the Cobalt stats. So, Strength, Dex, Con, Int, Wisdom, Charisma. They got a seven strength, abysmal, abysmal strength and wisdom. They are not wise. Not by any stretch of the imagination, but they are dexterous. Um, they have a seven strength. They are not strong. They're small and they are weak and they are unwise. Matter of fact, all of their mental scores are terrible. Or, well, all of their scores are terrible with the exception of dex. Uh, their dex is a 15. They are dexterous, and that's about it. Their AC is 12. They don't wear armor. Um, that 12 is just their dex, just from their plus two dex. They have five total hit points. They'll die in one hit, almost always die in one hit. And they have a speed of 30 feet. Typical 30 feet move speed. So, yes, um, right away, you get the feeling that these things are useless on their own. And they are. Which brings us to their first key ability, the defining factor of a kobold, pack tactics. Kobolds are 100% communal. Uh, they work together. Kobolds get compared to goblins a lot. This is the key difference between kobolds and goblins. Goblins are all about themselves. They'll abandon their friends. They bicker, they fight, they will... Constantly at odds, kobolds are not that. So that's where the pack tactics comes comes from. Never on your own. Always work together. Uh, they have your typical dark vision. I thought they had superior dark vision. Did they? They changed that, didn't they? I thought they had superior dark vision, but apparently not. Sixty feet of dark vision, and here's another big one: sunlight sensitivity. So, whereas goblins prefer to be in the dark to use their dark vision. Cobalts have to be in the dark. Um, disadvantage on attack rolls hurts, pretty much negates their pack tactics. Uh, disadvantage on wisdom, I mean, let's face it, <laughs> that, that <should> be, <laughs> they, they, weren't, they weren't noticing anything anyway. While in, so, while in sunlight, the cobalt has disadvantage on attack rolls as well as wisdom perception checks. Cobalts stay in the dark. They stay underground, almost always. And that's it. Uh, they're normally lawful evil. They're small. They're humanoid, although they would call themselves draconic. Uh, kobolds refer to themselves as draconic. They are humanoid, according to the stat block. And they use daggers and slings. Now, because their strength is a, is a 7, is a minus 2, and their dex is a plus 2, they will always use finesse weapons. You don't, you don't have to commit to a dagger. You can feel free to change this. Dagger or sling, you can feel free to change this. You can give them any of these that say finesse. Next up, they love dragons. So lore-wise, uh, kobolds believe that they were created by Tiamat from the blood of dragons. They value their heritage. They serve and they worship dragons. Uh, they're in awe in the presence of dragons. They absolutely love dragons, everything about them. Uh, and they aspire to be like dragons. In rare, uh, in rare circumstances, a kobold will hatch. They do hatch from eggs. In rare circumstances, a kobold will hatch from an egg with wings, with draconic wings. And you would think that a winged kobold would be, uh, they would see this as a gift. They don't. So the reason that kobold, kobolds do not respect, uh, they actually resent Winged cobalt, regular cobalts resent winged cobalts, and they treat them like traitors. Winged cobalts, known as urds, hatch seemingly at random from cobalt eggs, even in a tribe that has no adult urds. Although being able to fly is an incredible gift, and it would be expected for cobalts to interpret the wings as a blessing from Tiamat, ordinary cobalts resent them and do not get along with them. Fragments of cobalt legends speak of a yuck. I don't know how to pronounce this. Curl, Curlyek, a winged godling servant of Kurtlemach. Kurtlemach is the god of kobolds, who betrayed his master in some way. We don't know how. And kobolds see Erd as Curlyek's favorites. And they project their resentment of this traitor onto their winged kin. So this is why kobolds do not, um, do not favor the wing, their winged brethren. 
Which brings up another question. I believe I put that here. How do Kobolds feel about Dragonborn? So our first big question mark, you as the DM have to decide this. Those of you that are running Kobolds have to make this decision. This is the first decision you have to make. How do your Kobolds feel about Dragonborn? There is no canonical examples of how Dragon or how Kobolds feel about Dragonborn. There is nothing canonical. If there is, I would appreciate uh, a link or a page number. I couldn't find anything. So you can go one of two ways. Either a kobold highly respects a dragonborn because they are so closely related to dragons. I mean, they have the appearance of a dragon. They, they are clearly descended from dragons. So a kobold uh, may, have, may revere a dragonborn. They may. Uh, they may even trust dragonborn. It's possible. That's one way. That's one direction you could go. The other direction would be the same relationship that kobolds have with winged kobolds. And that's that they resent them. Uh, what could be seen as a blessing from Tiamat uh, is instead uh, resentment. Now, remember that winged kobolds' resentment comes from their betrayal, from the betrayer. Dragonborn don't have anything like that. A dragon, there's no history of Dragonborn betraying Tiamat or anything like that, which is why I, when I run Kobolds, I view them as, or I run them as they like Dragonborn and they respect them. Uh, they might resent Dragonborn for having all the best features. So remember the resentment for Wing Kobolds. They are jealous that Wing Kobolds have wings and they're more dragon-like. There's actually a history to that hatred or to that resentment. They still work together though. They're still part of the tribe. Wing Kobolds are still part of the tribe. Yeah, so you as the DM, you're going to have to make that decision. That is up to you how you run your kobolds. Colonel Mock is the god of kobolds. Kobolds do not worship Tiamat directly. They can. They acknowledge Tiamat as a god, and they realize that she is the, she is the god, but they don't worship her directly. They worship dragons, and they worship Colonel Mock. Colonel Mock was, I guess still is, I guess still is a, vass uh, a vassal of Tiamat. But he is currently trapped in a maze after being sent to retrieve a treasure. So a gnome god named Garl Glittergold stole treasure from Tiamat's hoard, and Kurtlemach was sent to get it back. Unfortunately, Glittergold tricked Kurtlemach and trapped him in a maze, and that's where he remains. Uh, it's believed that this maze is the maze that's in the abyss. The same maze that the Baphomet, this guy. It's believed that Colonel Malk is trapped in this guy's maze, but I don't have a source for that. I kind of just I inf I inferred that, so that could be wrong. Take that take that with a bit of a with a grain of salt. I don't have a source on that one, um, but that's where that's where he is. He's in a maze, probably that one, because of Garl Glittergold. Colonel Malk is hateful. Colonel Malk hates everything that's not. A cobalt hates everyone. Uh, highly emotional, intelligent, and unwise, just like his children. Which, I mean, they're not super intelligent either. Uh, clerics of Kurtlemach are rare, but you can tell a cleric of Kurtlemach because they wear gnome skulls for obvious reasons. It's difficult if it's difficult for Kurtlemach to give clerics spells because he's trapped. So clerics of Kurtlemach are rare. I'm not saying they're non-existent. And the ones that are the ones that do exist wear the skulls of gnomes as as decoration. Kobolds mostly focus on magic. Um, magic is considered a blessing and a connection to their draconic heritage. Uh, they rely on arcane magic because they have very little divine spellcasters. They focus mainly on arcane. And they specialize in evocation and divination, which is like your fireballs and your just your, your destructive magic. They use divination as a means to scout, to look for threats to their tribe. They have little use for healing magic, and this is because they have five whole hit points. If they take a hit, they're going down. Healing magic ver has very little use to a kobold. 
They don't carry potions. They don't carry scrolls of healing. They don't cure. They don't learn cure wounds. They don't learn healing word. They assume that if they get hit, they're going down. If they're wounded, it's death. They assume that. They may that may be a little bit of a hyperbole, but they don't. I, I can tell you they don't use healing magic. That's uh that's by the book. All right, combat tactics. So as I said, their combat is mainly avoiding getting hit. And when the need arise, arises to use pack tactics, to ambush their targets, to get advantage, kobolds will always work together. If, if a kobold is by itself, it's running. It will only attack when it has the numbers. Uh, a fight with a kobold is rarely going to be a one-on-one -on -one or a one on anything is barely going to be a, a hack and slash or a um, tank and spank. It's going to be a long drawn out process where you got to chase this cobalt through the entire layer. You got to chase a cobalt and their friends through an entire layer. It is not going to be cobalt runs up and swings. They are going to make combat very difficult for whoever they're fighting, or they're just not going to fight. Either it's going to be either it's going to be a, a hassle or it's not going to happen. Kobolds know how weak they are. They know they know how weak they are. They know how fragile they are. They will work together to take down a target, or they just won't. They'll just leave. Allies. None. <laughs> Allies. Non-existent. Kobolds trust no one. They're too weak. They are too small. They are unable to dominate other creatures. They don't tame. They don't tame anything. They're not strong enough. <laughs> Uh, they don't work with any other sentient creatures because they don't trust them. Uh, remember, Kurtlemach is just hate-fueled and hates everyone. Kobolds are the same. They don't trust anyone. Um, that's not to say they hate everyone. They just don't trust anyone. They don't work together with anyone. Um, they do live alongside other creatures like lizards and rats. Anything that lives in their bats. Anything that lives in their caves. And they live alongside whatever's underground with them. They don't tame them so much as they just live next to them. Although, I guess I should have specified in this ally section, dragons, right? They do worship dragons. They will serve dragons. So if you're in, so if you're in a, somebody asked about kobolds and what to do, how to run higher level kobolds, give them a dragon. Give them an adult or even a young dragon. You could say that the kobolds found a dragon egg and are attempting to raid <laughs> That would actually be pretty cool. I've never, I've never seen that. A, a, a group of kobolds find a a baby dragon whelpling or a young dragon, and they're trying to raise it. That could be cool. I like that. Maybe rare light, rarely allied with dragonborn. So that's so again, dragonborn is up in the air. There's no there's no canonical example of that, but you can absolutely give them a dragonborn. Absolutely, go for it. Go for it. I would. I would. What, the way I would do it is if a party member is playing a Dragonborn, they will have maybe advantage on um, persuasion, deception, maybe social skills, social, social skill checks. Dragonborn will have advantage on social skill checks with Kobolds. I, I, think, I think that Kobolds should um, respect Dragonborn. Maybe not necessarily revere them and worship them like they do regular dragons, but at least have some kind of, some kind of, ooh, I like you kind of thing. Where was I? Enemies. So, kobolds have three major enemies. Gnomes, three times. Kobolds hate gnomes, period. Uh, a gnome is their least favorite creature, their least favorite race. They, will, they absolutely despise them. Think orcs and elves, kobolds and gnomes. And the reason for it is straight up, Garl Glittergold, a gnomish god, trapped Kirtlemach, the Cobalt God. That's it. That's where the hatred comes from. And it's as simple as that. They hate gnomes. Like I said, the clerics of Kirtlemach wear gnome, skull, wear gnome skulls. That's it. Enemies. That's it for their major enemies. Um, you could also put um, literally everyone. <laughs> you could put literally everyone here. Uh, mostly because, like I said, Cobalts don't trust anyone. So now then, my favorite, my favorite part. My favorite part of the Kobold, in my opinion, the most iconic. So, tra so pack tactics is a pretty well-known feature of the Kobolds, but I think for me personally, 
traps are the the cobalt thing. Cobalts are natural engineers. They may not be intelligent. They may not be wise. But they have an understanding of how stuff works. And they're also really good at digging. They can tunnel as well as a dwarf. They build their tunnels sized for themselves, small creatures, so that they them they themselves can navigate their own tunnels without getting chased by medium creatures. The reason they do this is so they can avoid their own traps and so that they can get away from medium creatures. Again, kobolds do not like a, a fair fight. They are, they're not going to fight directly. They leave themselves very small tunnels to navigate through, forcing medium-sized creatures to go another direction. And this is where their traps come in. Kobolds are natural trap makers. At one time, back in the day, I love talking, you, know, you all probably, if you've watched my videos and heard me talk about kobolds, you've probably heard me say this. I'll say it again. Mo mostly, I say this mostly because they got rid of it. Like they don't have this anymore. So I'm just going to keep calling back to it. Kobolds at one time racially could make traps. It was part of what they did naturally. They had a skill. They had a bonus to making traps. They were so tra trap making was such a part of their of their race that they got an inherent bonus. Now this is the monster in the monster manual. This is the cobalt in the monster manual. I didn't have the playable cobalt. If you were the playable cobalt, you also had this bonus, which was which I thought was really funny. It rarely came up in campaigns. Like, could you imagine a player in your campaign be like, hey, I want to craft a trap real quick? It's kind of tough. Like the rules for crafting weren't, they weren't great then, they're not great now, but they got it. They got a bonus to crap to uh craft make cra trap making crap making. They got a bonus to trap making. Uh what kind of traps? What kind of traps may be a question? I got a list over here somewhere. Let me find it. Let me find it. They just, this, the 3.5 book describes some of their traps. Um, they spend most of their time fortifying the land around their layers with traps and warning devices. I didn't mention that. Um, part of their trap making is warning devices. They use spike pit, spike pits, trip wires attached to crossbows and other mechanical contraptions. Questions. Um, how would kobolds act in a society with other races like elves and humans? How would they act? Uh, they would probably, so in a scenario, you didn't specify whether they, they've been there long. Uh, man, how would they act? So I'm assuming this is if you're playing a kobold. So a kobold in a, most of the examples that we have canonically of kobolds in society, they're, they're usually servants to some larger entity. Um, there's example. There's exa There's an example of kobolds that serve humans, uh, mages. I'm trying to think. That's really the only two examples I have. Mostly servants. Uh, I think in yeah, Rime of the Frost Maiden, uh, you can form a treaty with a human city and a kobold lair. So they're open to the idea of working with humans. The problem is that they're so easily dominated that they're really slow to trust people. So over time, they're open to the idea of building trust with other people. So I would role play that they that they don't trust people easily, but when they do, that's actually really good. Um, what I would how I would role play a cobalt is if you uh, they're slow to trust, but once you gain their tr their trust, super loyal, very loyal because they're loyal to each other. Remember, they got pack tactics. They're not like goblins where they just where it's just a free for all. They, they are very uh, community-oriented, very team-oriented. 